Do you want to sound more fluent and natural in English? Do you want to easily understand native English speakers? If you said yes, 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 this is the lesson for you. To sound more fluent and natural, to understand native speakers, you need to know colloquial English, also known as colloquialisms, simply casual speech. And today you're going to learn 24 colloquial words that you need to know. Welcome back to J4's English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. Colloquial English, also known as colloquialisms, is simply informal language used in everyday speech. This includes phrases, idioms, and expressions, and you can use these with your friends, your family, and even your colleagues and boss. As a warning, just know that these may or may not be appropriate for more formal situations. It depends on the specific situation. How does this compare to slang? Well, slang is very informal speech that is often not standard English. And slang is often viewed as unprofessional. Colloquial English, what you'll learn today is casual, but friendly and natural. And I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF, so don't worry about taking notes. Number one, let's hit the books. Do you know this one? You should, because to hit the books means to begin studying. You could say, I have a big test tomorrow, so I need to hit the books. And hopefully you're going to hit the books by watching more of my videos to help you improve your English. If you agree, put let's do it, let's do it, let's do it in the comments below. Hit the books! Well, time to hit the books. And number two is let's do it. To do something, this is a casual, friendly way of saying to complete something. But native speakers use this in many different situations. I could ask you, are you ready to leave? And then you say, yes, I'm ready. So I say, let's do it, which means let's leave. Let's complete that action. Let's do it. So let's practice this. Do you want me to teach you the next expression? If you do, again, put let's do it, let's do it, put let's do it in the comments. Let's do it, let's do it. 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 Number three, yup or yuppers. Have you ever heard yuppers? Oh, this is a great one. Again, I can ask you, are you ready to leave? And you can say, yes, I'm ready to leave. Or instead of yes, to sound more casual, you can say yup or yuppers. You can put it in a full sentence, yup, I'm ready, yuppers, I'm ready, or you can just use that one word, yup, Yuppers. And notice that S, yuppers, with an S. So again, question for you. Do you want me to keep teaching you natural expressions? Put yuppers with that S. Put yuppers in the comments if you do. Yuppers. Yuppers. Yep, 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 yep. Number four, I'll see you at eight-ish. Hmm, what time is eight-ish? Do you know? Adding ish to the time means around, around eight. So this could be 7.45 or 8.15. To sound more professional, you can say, I'll see you at approximately eight. That's the more formal way to say around. And the casual way is to add ish. Native speakers use this a lot. We'll be there soon. Well, soonish. This means in the near future, but not immediately. It's a little longer than soon. Just know that ish is not actually a word, but all native speakers understand it. Oh, as you always say, oh, uh, what? Eight-ish. Number five, my bad. You know this one, right? This is used when you take responsibility or accept fault. Maybe you're in a meeting and your colleague says, the chart on page five is from 2023. Shouldn't it be from 2024? My bad, I'll change that ASAP. No worries. My bad, Missy, my bad. My bad, my bad. Our next one is of course, no worries. You probably know this one. This means it's okay or 
don't worry about it. Native speakers often use this instead of you're welcome. Jennifer, thanks so much for the new lesson. You might say that. And I can reply to you and say, no worries, no worries. But we also use this to apologize. Maybe you're shopping and you accidentally hit someone with your shopping cart and you can say, oh, I'm so sorry. And the person replies back and says, no worries. No worries, no worries. No worries, no worries. Everything's all no worries, no worries. Number seven, no big deal or no biggie. This also means it's okay, don't worry about it, no worries, or it's not significant, it's not important. So again, if you're shopping and you accidentally hit someone with your shopping cart and you say, oh, I'm so sorry, the person can reply back and say, no big deal. This is often used after an expression of gratitude to say it wasn't significant, it wasn't important. Maybe you say, wow, Jennifer, it's so nice of you to provide a free lesson PDF. Remember, you can download it in the description. And I can reply back and say, no big deal, no biggie. I'm letting you know that this wasn't a significant task for me to do, so I'm happy to do it. No biggie. No big deal. Number eight, a hundred percent. This one is very trendy right now. She doesn't do her fair share of the work. A hundred percent. This means I completely agree with you. I 100% agree with you. For pronunciation, native speakers often say a hundred percent, a hundred, a hundred percent. You can also say 100%. Yeah, agreed, 100%. Absolutely agree, 100%. Number nine, I'm really into yoga. What about you? What are you into? To be into something, this is when you enjoy doing something. You have a strong interest in something. This question is commonly used when you're getting to know someone. So if you're on a first date, you can ask the person, so what are you into? And he replies back and says, I love rebuilding cars. It's my passion. Just notice a verb of preference, love, is commonly used to reply to this question. So what about you? What are you into? You could say, I'm really into learning English with J-Force English. Aw, thanks so much. Notice that structure. Verb to be, I am into and then you have your verb with ing, learning English. If that describes you, again, put let's do it, let's keep learning, let's do it, put let's do it in the comments. And right now, I'm into yoga. I'm really into fashion. Number 10, let's Uber it. What does this mean? This means let's take an Uber. Native speakers frequently turn nouns, Uber, into a verb. A native speaker would commonly say, I'll email you, I'll WhatsApp you, I'll Zoom you, using them as verbs. Remember, you have to conjugate the verb with the subject and time reference. Last night, we Ubered to the conference. Last night, we took an Uber to the conference. I Ubered. What's your Uber? I'll email you the address. Number 11, that's wild. This is used to show surprise, amazement, or astonishment. A lot of Ubers won't accept my ride because I live outside of the city. This is true. You can reply back and say, that's wild, which means I'm surprised. That's wild. <laughs> that's wild. Number 12, really? With a question, really? This is also used to show surprise, amazement, or astonishment. I don't get Uber Eats. It won't come to my area. Also true. You can reply and say, really? And you can even add, that's wild. Put them both together. Really, really, really. Number 13, shoot. This means ask your question. Jennifer, I have a question about number 11, shoot. Ask me your question. Jennifer, can I ask you a question about number five? Shoot, yes, you can ask me your question. Number 14, give me a shout. First notice in the last one, shoot, pronunciation, oot. This one, 
out, shout, shoot, shout. This means call me or contact me. Give me a shout when you land. Give me a shout at eight-ish. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. If he pops out, give me a shout. Number 15, can you flip me the invite? To flip means to send electronically. You flip someone something, just like you send someone something. Can you flip the team, someone, the invite, something. You can also flip something to someone. Same with send something to someone. Can you flip the invite, something, to the team, someone. Number 16, now let's look at the invite. Can you flip me the invite? Invite is a shortened form of invitation. To invite is a verb. She invited the team to the party. An invitation is a noun. Have you sent out the invitations for the party? An invite is a noun. Have you sent out the invites for the party? Notice, because it's a noun, it has a singular or plural form. I have to send you an invite. I can send you an invite if you want. Number 17, I'll flip it to you in a sec. In a sec means in a second, which is a short period of time, soon. You can say, I'll be there in a sec. You can also get someone's attention by saying, do you have a sec? Do you have a small amount of time? Maybe a few minutes in this case. And I can reply back and say, yep, yuppers. There in a sec. Wait, you in a sec. Oh, wait a sec. Number 18, she's a newbie. A newbie is a new member of a team or a group. You might say, can you show Sarah how to file the reports? She's a newbie. Or your boss might say, keep an eye on the newbies while I'm gone. What about you? Are you a new member of this community? Have you recently subscribed or started watching my videos? If you have, then put, I'm a newbie, I'm a newbie. Put, I'm a newbie in the comments. I love newbies. I'm happy to have you. She's a total newbie. I'm a newbie. Sure, newbie. Number 19, my study routine is dialed in. To be dialed in means to be fully optimized or perfected. And here, dialed in functions as an adjective. So is your study routine fully optimized, perfected? If it is, you can say, it's my study routine. It's dialed in. If not, you can say, I need to dial it in. In this case, it's the verb. I need to dial it in. I need to perfect it, optimize it. How dialed in were you? Number 20, I'm crushing it. To crush something means to do a great job. So if you're enjoying this video, you can say, Jennifer, you're crushing it. You're doing a great job. Do you agree? If you do, put crushing it, crushing it, crushing it in the comments. This is a verb. So in the past simple, you would say, I crushed the job interview. I did a great job. I'm crushing it. Yeah, I'm really crushing it. Exactly. See? I'm crushing it. Number 21, I'm loving it. You probably recognize this because of McDonald's. McDonald's slogan is I'm loving it. And notice loving in loving it. Now, this technically breaks an English grammar rule because love is a state of verb. So you would say, I love this song, even if the action takes place right now. But McDonald's popularized this, so now it's very friendly, casual, and acceptable to say, I'm loving this song. And by putting it in the present continuous, it emphasizes that the action is taking place now. I love it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> Number 22, learning English is a piece of cake. You know this one, right? To be a piece of cake means to be very easy. Maybe learning English is a piece of cake when you have a great teacher. If you agree, you can say, a hundred percent. So put that in the comments. Uh, it's a piece of cake, piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. Number 23, we shot the breeze in the elevator. To shoot the breeze, this is to make small talk. So to have casual, lighthearted conversation. Notice those conjugations, shoot, but in the past, shot, 
And the past participle, shot. You might say, my neighbor and I always shoot the breeze when we take out the garbage. We see each other and we have a lighthearted conversation. We shoot the breeze. And finally, number 24, you're on fire. To be on fire, this means to perform well, to do a great job. I could say, you just added 24 common and natural expressions to your speech. You're on fire. So let's celebrate this. Put, I'm on fire, I'm on fire. You just did an amazing job. Put, I'm on fire in the comments. Do you want me to keep teaching you more natural expressions? If you do, put more, 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 more in the comments below. And of course, make sure you like this video, share with your friends, and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently, you can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. And you need to add these phrasal verbs to your vocabulary right now, so watch the video.